status. Those are specific. Okay? They, they can or should be specific to each technique and each action or motion in each technique. Yeah. Almost like Chappelle, but not quite that extreme. He says they are adjusted based on the technique you find, which is the correct shape for that technique. Okay. And your body. He talks about shapes, and I talk about proper planes. The shape is yes, goes with the techniques. I agree with that. Planes are, are more to do with uh, proper line of execution where if I'm uh, to fall in line with what Chappelle was talking about, snapping twig, where he was talking about opening this up and striking at a particular angle. Right. Okay? Okay. So the planes deal with that. Uh, delayed sword, for example, my, the proper act, line of action into this block would be on a number five plane so that this moves forward. And I have a little different theory on blocking too. I don't have a lot of circular that okay, shoots straight across more in, involving and in, in, uh, utilizing geometrical paths versus lines. <clears throat> because a path is typically up defensive in nature and a line is typically offensive in nature. Does that make sense? So if I'm striking with this line here, I have a much smaller surface than I'm covering mm -hmm. as opposed to the path. <clears throat> okay, so anyway, the planes, uh, for example, in delayed sword, when I block here, if I block here, it changes the angle of my bone. Right. Okay? If I block uh, here, it changes the angle of my bone. Okay? Right. But if I drop back here and as I kick here, this is now set up to come in perpendicular to this 90 degree angle. Okay. All right? So that plane is a number nine plane. Okay? And that's specific to that body position and that target to, to acquire the proper angle of incidence. Okay. That makes sense? So if we look at a technique like uh, if you're doing, um, no, I'm not gonna do that. <clears throat> okay, so each of the nine planes has its place. Uh, some of them are used more than others. Okay, I emphasize more or less number six and nine, six and nine that are diagonal planes because diagonal motion cancels height, depth, and width instead of just height, just width, or just depth, or two of the three, right? Um, so my emphasis is a lot, more, a, lot, a lot more often diagonal planes to my opponent than it is horizontal or vertical planes to my opponent, depending on what I want to accomplish. Obviously, you know, with everything, it's a general rule. Um, so not with, 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 what's that? Not a law. Not a law, no. There are no law, and no. I don't, I don't ever say that this is the law. I say that the principles, concepts, theories, or general rule. Right, Billy? Yes, sir. Okay. Almost everything I say is a general rule because it can be changed, exception. manipulated, or there's an exception. I firmly believe that because I've made exceptions to almost everything. So, <clears throat> with Twist of Fate, we have a couple of things working. We have spine angle. Uh, so when I when I come through, the, the, the initial part of the technique is here. Okay, you step through, do your slicing it, boom. Okay, you change my spine angle. Step through. Now this is where people run into problems as soon as they step. Okay, you should already go back. You should already go ahead, kick, boom, and up, lift, have lifted this step and drive and driving that this way. Exactly. Now. Good. Now spin and good. And let go. go. Yep. Okay. So that as I'm landing, I'm already manipulating my opponent. And you can in fact use this. So do this again. Okay. You can use this pull. No, stay there. As you as you execute the kick. Now before you step, lift this. Boom. See what I'm saying? And start driving me forward. There you go. And that's the problem. Everybody tries to do this. They try to go here, here, and then start to work the technique. It doesn't work. Or we'll because now you're working. What you're doing is this, which is like an arm break thing, right. which work for me. Right. Yeah, that's a trade off. Thing. Oh, anyway, it's uh, on video. Uh, well, it, it, it's on his video. I'm doing it. So now that now you're working back here. It's like trying to lift a 100 pound bag of weed or a 50 pound bag of anything from here up over to here, right? It's like a bad judo throw. Yes. So we need to keep this in front of us. 
See what I'm saying? Here, and then come back. Okay, now <clears throat> the other part of that is what we call a wheel and axle, okay? Which is, has to do with the levers and leverage, okay? Where I have a fulcrum, and I have this lever, which is his or her arms, okay? The fulcrum being either the spine at the tail, at the uh, connective point with the, uh, where the hips are, okay? Or at the feet, where they connect to the ground. So that's all going to rotate, okay? Wheel, uh, wheel and axle is, picture yourself a steering wheel, okay? So we have these levers coming out off the center of the fulcrum, and then the action here and the load in the, is down at the bottom, or also on the sides, on the inside of the circle. That makes sense? Okay. <clears throat> so we have this, and then you can use it as either a first or a third class lever, okay? Three different classes of lever, a first class is like a teeter-totter, okay? You have the effort pushing down, the fulcrum, which I always represent with a triangle, the lever, which is the bar, and then the load, which I represent typically with a, with a square, okay? So push down here, fulcrum's here, lift's here. Um, that's a first class lever. Second class lever goes, uh, is like a wheelbarrow, okay? Now, for general rule, in tempo, or in any art, second class levers can be found in trapping, choking, and grabbing. Okay? Because the load is always in the middle. Okay, can you show me an example? Yes. Sleeper is a perfect example. Okay? So as you go through sleeper, boom, good, grab, freeze. Okay? Right here. You've got, okay, this bar is the lever. Okay. My neck is the load. Effort up here. See how that works? Oh, okay. I'm in the bit. I'm in the middle. Good. So you should be anchoring this. Yeah. There you go. And pulling this in. So when you come into this, you're closing this triangle, right? Okay. Okay. If you know how this lever functions, then doesn't it make sense that you would have a better idea of how to apply it? Sure. Okay. So the function is fulcrum, load, and effort. So if I know that that the load's here, and then you apply more pressure, I can bring this. I can manipulate this this way, right? Okay. But if I just do this, it doesn't work, right? right? Now, this is one of the reasons, let me borrow you, that, that, that we need to be in position for sleeper, for example, okay, when we come in here, that we need to get in position so that when I pull my elbow, when I anchor my elbow, it actually presses against the load, boom, and creates the choke here. If I'm out here and I'm doing this, it doesn't work out so well. Then I have to change. I have a question on that when I was watching too. What is the advantage of not stepping versus stepping, or is it just a preference? What do you mean? Stepping through? Yeah, most everybody else is stepping through. Is there a reason that With, you don't? Yes, step there through? is a reason that I don't. Yes, because when you knock somebody out, they fall straight to the ground. And if my knee is under them when they fall straight to the ground, my knee goes kaboom. Crash. The technique, this, the traditional technique goes here, right? But the, but the knockout is until, but the knockout, it, it, people generally hold them. Hold here for, for the for the knot, and then when they fall, they're straight down. So if they're if they're holding here for the takedown, they're doing it wrong. Well, that's why I'm asking. I'm just wanting to clarify. I go here because okay. I I don't plan on just taking long, and I don't teach it this way. I don't do it that way. I go here. It's a double carotid artery, and it's, it takes about two and a half seconds, three seconds. This is a compound lever, class two. So I can compound two levers, different classes. Or I can compound two of the same levers, same class of lever. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Just, just, just get a little arm, 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 a little fuzzy. <laughs> okay, yeah. So, so with, so, uh, yeah. I don't, I don't do the, I don't do the takedown. Instead of, instead of coming here, or instead of coming here, boom. Well, because again, I'm working to the side of myself now. They're not in front of me. Let me give you an example. If you're doing this technique on me, boom, go ahead, step through. Okay. I was, but I'm not with the beginning of the until I was All Right. Which kind of now I'm gonna go down. Right. Okay. So you're not gonna have the choke. So are you doing the, are you finishing the choke down? No, the, the, the choke is in the well, generally in the they're holding them right. using their weight to hold okay. them out. That's right. What. And this is the thing that this is the thing that we I'm I personally have, was taught and uh, adhere to is that as you're doing that choke, 
and you've got that leg there, and you've got my leg wrapped around your leg, okay? and I had a student get their knee blown out this way, because they they went down and dropped across that leg. Okay. Okay. That coupled with the fact that you're choking them and you do not know when they're going to go out. So if you have your leg entwined here, and you're choking them and they pass out suddenly, this is where I was talking about. Yeah. Straight down, even if they're, let's say their foot gets stuck behind you, and they fall away from you, they're going to take you with them. Okay? So you're teaching them to teach it then as a push drag. So we come in here, boom, and I just collapse their dead body, do a reverse step through and just let them collapse. Now in form five, where we go one, two, three, that's the takedown. So the technique is really traditionally taught not with a step through, not here. The technique is really traditionally taught uh, here, and then step through as you've got the choke and do the takedown. Uh, long, 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 long ago, before, you know, all the updated revisions, blah, blah, blah. So that's something I got from Mr. Rainey, though, was that, the way, that specific technique and that specific piece of footwork. And I, I like my knees. I've had surgery once already. But how do people not falling knees this good? And so I'm, I, I kind of, yeah, I kind of adhere to that. And, and it may seem like kind of a, yeah, you know, you could get away with it. Yeah, you could. Nine times out of ten, you probably could. That one time, I don't want it to happen. No, I'm, I'm with you. I'm just asking. So that's a class. So class two levers. Okay. Um, class three lever is a hammer or a shovel where we have, we dig in, pull up, okay? We can use a class one to pull up, but at some point you're manipulating this and using this as the fulcrum, okay? And the load is out on the end. So from a class one, if you switch the fulcrum and the effort, That'd be a it's a class, step. goes to a class three. Correct, yes. And most arm bars, okay, locked wing, so if you're doing lock lane, step back, boom, boom, get it, get it free. That's a class three lever, isn't it? Yep. Okay? Because you got the fulcrum behind you, you got the effort here, and I'm the load. Right? Okay, so <clears throat> as you go through your techniques and as you as you look at these and you say, okay, well this is that uh, crossing talent when I come in here. Definitely. Definitely. Class three, uh, or I can Combine a one and a three. Okay, I can pull and push at the same time, so I have this circular motion happening. Okay, mm -hmm. and and uh, not just accelerate the speed with which they into the ground or into your knee, but you can now augment each lever by adding the other. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, so those are the three classes of levers. Okay. Uh, Wheel and axle, typically either a class one or class two, depends on where the load is in relation to the axis, the rotation. Right? Okay. Does that make sense? Okay. Uh, I mean, so, yeah. it so a twist of fate. Where are you again? So a twist of fate as we come as we come back, okay, and we come through here, okay. Now he's become my steering wheel. See? Mm -hmm. Okay. But now let's talk about zone folding real quick. Okay. I I need to take this this quadrant across to this quadrant, okay? That cancels all the other quadrants, okay? See what I'm saying? Uh, and there's lots of techniques that use this, and it's just a fancy term. It doesn't, it, you know, it's zone cancellation. You can call it whatever you want. I just call it zone folding because it actually gives you a visual image of what you're doing. Well, I'm taking a zone and I'm folding it over on top of another one. Plus it sounds cool. Okay, that's plus it sounds cool. It's very important. So, so I do this, now, here, what I'm doing is I'm actually, I'm still, I'm still folding, I'm folding the top half down to the bottom half. Well, I like the pull. We don't have to pull them, and that makes a big difference, too. I like that. Okay. So we pull, we stretch them out, right? Boom, kick, pull. Then I start before I step, okay? I've got this. This is a slice, boom, a lift, okay? This gives, this lift gives me the ability to take this across and take this quadrant to this quadrant, okay? And I'm moving this quadrant, come back, moving this quadrant over to that quadrant. Yeah. Now this isn't this way or this way. Okay, don't forget about your magic little helper here. Okay, so this 
so I'm here, I'm here, I, I need to lift this and drive that. Okay? Now I haven't spun yet, but then I'm going to do my reverse step through. And in almost everything I do, Okay, well, yeah, not just anchoring the elbow, but now what I'm going to do is I'm going to employ another lever. Oh, said, said a exactly. Yeah. Okay. So I'm using that fulcrum, and I set him up. What am I doing with his butt? See what I'm saying? I'm yeah. lifting. Uh -huh. Now, if I anchor and do that, I okay, really have that. Now, let's look at where I use that elsewise. Look, come on. Okay. I see all this all the time. Okay. Well, I don't know. I didn't say you did. <laughs> so I see it all the time. I never liked that. That's why. Okay. It tears your rotator cuff. Yeah. So what I do is I bring this up as an uppercut. Boom. Stand them up, and then it breaks. Because now they're weak. I'm stronger. I'm in a position anatom or kinesi kine kinesthetically, right, to right. to activate that. And then I can come around there. Okay. Class three up. See that? Yeah. Okay. Uh, okay, so wheel and axle. So we're, we're using this. Okay, we're using this. We've done this. Okay, we're pulling here, pushing, pulling. Okay. What am I? What am I using here? Slice. Boom. I need this. I need to get this slice through and get the hips to rotate. Okay. What that does is that helps get this activated here. Right. Boom. And then get this folded down on top of that. Now if I just held this and went here, see what happens to his body? He moves, he moves, he moves, he moves, he moves. That's not helpful. Right. That's why this comes up. What it does is it puts weight back here, okay? And it pulls weight here, see? And it starts to spin in, not stepping. Stepping, stepping, spinning, spinning. See the difference? Okay, so so now we learn how to control through levers and leverage and the planes. This I'm just working this on a plane. I remember five plane. Okay, but I keep this. I'm also I'm now I'm using another wheel and axle here. Okay, if I'm here now. I'm using this as the fulcrum and this as the steering wheel. See? This is a big, long, big, big lot of work, a lot of motion for me to do. I'm just showing you this as an example of how, what I'm doing with the, with the zone. Bringing this across through the use of that diagonal plane. It's diagonal to his body. See? His spine is here. I'm diagonal to that. Right? So if I grab this and I go this way, okay, and, and take this shoulder back toward his butt, boom. That's that zone holding again. Right? Okay, so. Or quadrant folding. Okay? So we come here, I've got to lift this so that I can bring this across. So I, I'm unweighting the feet in a specific sequence, in a specific manner. Boom. So when I come, whoops. Did I not spin you? Okay. So that when I come through, boom. Then I'm here, I go knee, slam them on the ground, do whatever. Okay. Okay. So try it on me. There you go. Oh, there you go. Pull through. There you go, son. I'll drop. Go. If you let go, I'll drop. <laughs> Good. Okay? So you guys can work that. Work on each other. If you're having trouble, the thing is, is you, you know, if you learn to make it anecdotal where you have a specific problem and you can troubleshoot it, you have, you know, you, you understand that, okay, there are certain principles involved and this isn't working, so what am I not doing right with this, 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 or this, right? That's uh, pretty much system-wide for any of the manipulation techniques. You can pretty much guess that you're either not working a, a height, depth, or width properly, you're not moving a zone in the right direction, you're not using a lever properly, properly or leverage properly, or maybe you're not using the right lever. Yeah? You may be using a one, you need to be 
using a three. Or you're trying to use a one, but it's not working. You need to change the change the, where the fulcrum is and where your effort is, so that you can manipulate the load. That makes sense. Mm -hmm. Proper. All right. <clears throat> uh, so twist of fate. We're good with that. Yes. 